Yeah. All right, we were waiting for the number, and here it is. The Commerce Department releasing its first quarter GDP gross domestic product report, revealing a 1.6% drop in consumption that is worse than expected and a key indicator of a potential recession ahead. Meanwhile, as gas prices are hovering around $5 a gallon, we spoke to one gas station CEO looking to provide some relief for everyone this holiday weekend by slashing costs to under $4. We just thought it was a good opportunity to provide some relief. We know how difficult it's been over the last couple of months. And uh, with the timing of the 4th of July weekend, a lot of people wanting to be on the road and traveling, we thought it was a great opportunity to do it. We know it has a big impact. I mean, we see it ourselves. You know, ga high gas prices aren't good for gas retailers either because people have to spend more on gas. And so they have less in in disposable income to spend on, on other things. So uh, it's difficult for everyone. So uh, who, who he's doing something about it. Mm -hmm. We're doing something about it because we want insight. That's why we booked America's Newsroom co-anchor. Uh, she's also host of uh, co-host of The Five. She also got another special announcement about something else you could see her do uh, in a really? matter of she's moments. She's busy. Right. <laughs> what would that be? You're special. <laughs> Fox Nation. Oh, Fox Nation. Fox Nation. Oh, yes. Well, it's right. not my special, but I have participated in the special. Yes. I you don't make want to, it special. I, uh, yes. Okay. Thank you, you so you're much. You're downplaying all you do. <laughs> yeah. uh, but Dana, when I think the economy, I think Dana Perino. Oh, I'm uh, sure but, you do. But politically... What does it mean, the president? We're not in a recession yet. Well, okay, but 1.6% growth, not sure. great. Okay, but yeah, so they would say, see, we're not in a recession. Remember what the administration's line was the Sunday before last on all the shows? Recession is not inevitable. Right. And so they'll be able to say, see, we told you. Okay, but it's 1.6% growth. And where is Mr. Empathy when you need him? Uh, talking to people out in about, especially in the suburbs, right? If you have to, kids are now out of school. So you got camps you got to go to. You got to go to the grocery store at least twice a week, or probably. Driving. There's all the driving. And so all of this adds up. So somebody like Sheets comes along and says, well, let's try to save you a dollar a gallon. That, that yeah. could add up. Yeah. Would, and, speaking of, and so Brian was asking you about politically, you know, the Democrats would like November to be about um, January 6th and about abortion. Mm -hmm. But when the kitchen table issues are the price of chicken yeah. and gas is five bucks, that's what you vote on. It's interesting you say that. I've been thinking about it over the weekend. Just try to, like, read all the stuff. And then spend a little bit of quiet time yeah. letting it um, marinate, as Bill Hammer likes to say. So I do think that Democrats are trying to hide their economic failures by focusing on cultural issues that now they think are in their favor. Roe v. Wade um, going away being one of them. Uh, but the, Democrat, the Republicans are trying to basically say, OK, that's not a big deal, but just focus on economic failures. When it all comes out in the wash, obviously, I, I do think that your, your everyday expenses, your inflation, your economic those things are going to matter most. That's always at the top of the list. Right. However, in tight districts where you have really close races and maybe in those suburban districts and you have a lot of Republicans trying to flip Democrat seats back to Republican hands, those might get a little bit tougher, perhaps, if depending on how this all shakes out and how people decide to think about it and talk about it is really important, too. So let's talk about your Fox Nation uh, okay. special, uh, American, American Dynasty. Dynasty. You have been well, assigned the George H. the Bush family. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't the only one, but this is a pretty in neat series. I mean, there's families. That you, did anybody watch The Gilded Age? Yes. Oh, I my God. It. I knew you did. I loved it. I'm watching you. I'm, I'm like, waiting on the next season. I loved it. And so a lot of those yeah. families, right, they, they pass on through the years, and they had made so much money, and how right. do they give back the along Astros, the way? The Vanderbilt. And they decide, perhaps sometimes they decide, to run for uh, uh, in politics mm -hmm. and serve that way. The Bushes, to me, are a little bit different. I know that George H.W. and Barbara Bush would bristle at the idea that they were included in this series because they never thought of themselves as a dynasty. They thought that was absolutely ridiculous. Right. One of the reasons is because, for example, the Kennedy family, Joe Kennedy, actually had a map, and he would say, okay, this child's going to do this, and this child's going to do this. The, unfortunately, they lost one of their sons in World War II. That was a son that was supposed to be the president of the right. United States. And then it went to John F. Kennedy Jr. after that, after his passing. And so you had like a whole plot. The Bushes would say, like, we never had a plan. Like, right. That just wasn't happening. But public service was a really important part of it, as was humility and gratitude for all they were getting. Senator Bush. He was Senator Bush, right? Prescott Bush? Yes. And that were, it was just it's such a big family, and so many yeah. of them have gone into politics yeah, and done some great things. Mm -hmm. But so they don't like to be called a dynasty. But the sh the, right. I, I like I like history programs like this, and Fox Nation's done a great job with it. What do you think of Gilded Age? Do you love it? I, I couldn't get enough. I know. And, and Peter will he might not want to admit it on air, but he loved it too. I bet. So uh, listen, what's coming on the channel in exactly 12 minutes and 30 seconds? 12 minutes. Okay. So um, we have uh, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick from Texas. We are expecting a Supreme Court decision, perhaps on that Remain in Mexico 
uh, decision that will be there. Also, Joe O'Day, you can see there's from Colorado. He won a primary yesterday. He will take on Michael Bennett, who is the incumbent senator. Michael Bennett has a 100 percent voting record with Joe Biden. Joe O'Day is going to try to take him on. Melia Takas from Staten Island. You know Dr. Siegel. Of course, we've got yep. some news, uh, especially on insulin. If you if you have, know somebody with diabetes, you're going to want to pay attention to this. And then General Jack Keane on the president's trip to uh, Madrid, where he is meeting with NATO members and as Russia ramps up Ooh, its war. You're making Brian jealous. We are, Brian, absolutely. Sweden Brian and Finland, right? General. Sweden and Finland, part of yeah. NATO. You, you want to talk NATO? One step clo closer. That, Love that, it. That really is something that excites me. You well, they're one NATO. step closer. And also, you yeah. know what is so exciting about all of that, too, is that now that they're in NATO, they can help us in the Arctic, which is one of my really big nerdy right, obsessions. Right, uh, because the Russians are taking it. Mm -hmm. All right, terrific. Thanks, Dana. We'll be Great watching. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. I'll see you in a few minutes. All right. All right. Now, I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.